show a live stream and the podcast let me just where's the button for getting rid of that ah there we go let's put the frame on the screen as well a little bit of a ragged start this morning because we're trying to get a cat out of the studio and you know when you want to get a cat out of a studio it kind of knows that you want to get the cat out of the studio and then it runs underneath the desk behind the studio lights and so on but uh, she's out of the room now she just wanted to be fed but i didn't have time to do that mrs m will have to do that and um a little Jenny will have to go hungry for um, a few more minutes, uh, but they're quite insistent, aren't they? The way they get under your feet and uh, trip you up and that sort of thing. Still a learning curve for me, learning to live harmoniously with cats. Does it ever actually happen? How are you this morning? Uh, thank you very much to you, Anna, and your patience. We're going to play your video in a moment. We had a packed show yesterday, of course. Philomena wasn't able to join us for some feel-good Philomena Friday last Friday, but she joined us yesterday to uh, talk about their those... What were they? The Eshtas and the Ishtos. Uh, they, oh, I didn't ask her about Iso, did I? But the, I can't remember the, uh, what's the name of those? Please, James, help me out here. Can we remember? We couldn't remember yesterday. Then we suddenly remembered, and now I can't remember again. Uh, but there was a particular, it wasn't a preposition, but a particular kind of word um, that describes that, that there. And I used it yesterday. Oh, my camera's wonky as well. Did the cat knock the camera? Because um, I was out and about... Um, Yes, trying my Portuguese yesterday in some of the most uh, unusual circumstances, trying to buy flea treatment. Uh, no, not for me, as one of my correspondents thought yesterday. Uh, I was trying to buy flea treatment and went to the pharmacia and jumped the queue in Portuguese as well, um, in, a, in a way that became quite embarrassing. But it was one of those situations where immersion paid off. It was great. Um, it, it was, I, I, I was, um, who dares wins, I guess. And, um, I was a little bit more daring than I might usually be. And this is how you grow in confidence day by day, isn't it? Just trying something, trying a little bit more. This is what I'm sharing with our 28-day program, uh, my foundation course, my 28-day foundation course of language and culture. Just a little bit, the baby steps every day, and you find yourself getting into hot water occasionally, linguistic hot water, cultural hot water. But it all works out wonderfully in the end. I did buy flea treatment in Portuguese and thank the lady. Uh, for helping me and it was a lovely smile on her face uh, when, when I left the pharmacy yesterday. What else did I do? There were a number of things. There were a number of things I attempted in Portuguese and yes definitely I, I dared and I won yesterday. How are you getting on? How are you with your Portuguese? Saw a fantastic meme on that note as well. Uh, what about this one uh, this morning? This is from Silver Tongue Portuguese for Foreigners. How I feel. Let's get them on the show at some point. How I feel. Um, says uh, Silver Tongue or suggests Silver Tongue Portuguese for foreigners when two Portuguese native speakers include me in the conversation. That's me over on the left there. Do you like that, James? I thought you might. Uh, fantastic. And thank you for your contributions this morning. Coach Turner's on the road. Thank you for your pictures. What is it with him and ceilings? And we've got an, a new ceiling, uh, a new ceiling from, um, from uh, Coach Turner this morning. Where is he, I wonder? Um, the joys of a very quiet Alençon. Ah, must be in France. En France aujourd'hui. So uh, let's uh, show show the, the ceiling. Today's ceiling of the Portugal tour. Um, we'll be showing that today. And I've got uh, James Holly's a mindful meme and also a dad joke meme as well. You have been warned. 
back to the Starship Enterprise for one of those, filling very ably the T-Duck vacuum. Uh, let's see who else is with us this morning. Oh, joining us later in the show, Head Gardener McGrady. Better, better get a wiggle on because he'll be joining us around quarter to nine when he has his coffee and cigarette break on the way to work in Lisbon. He'll be talking about growing vegetables this morning. Um, I want to talk to him about pruning as well. We'll be going to Quinta Essencial with Jason at 9.30. And a wonderful, because we're with the Quinta crew today, a wonderful update from Matty at uh, Quinta Entre Aguas this morning as well. So Matty will be joining us with a little bit of an update from Quinta Entre Aguas. It's always wonderful checking in with Matty to see where he's got to. Where was where was he when we spoke to him last month? Um, I think he was still waiting for his borehole. Who doesn't like a borehole first thing in the morning? Um, let's see if he's completed on that. But it was all coming together very nicely after we'd seen him, you know, a few months ago, somewhat crestfallen, uh, you know, in the in the winter, in the rain, wanting to move to the site, the site not being ready, setbacks. And uh, there he was. The birds were singing. The sky was blue. It was fantastic uh, seeing him last time. So let's get another update from Matty, from Lee, and from Jason as well at Quinta Essencial in Central Portugal, where he's growing lots of wonderful vegetables as well. Looking forward to chatting to those three gentlemen of the Quinta crew um this morning how are you doing do let me know in the chat if you will let's go to the chat right now shall we and see what's going on bon dia gumpers feliz terça todos como vão as coisas how are things let's go straight into a mindful moment i need one of these right now and i'm gonna have a sip of tea while we play uh, anna's video in just a moment after we've checked in with coach turner and james mindfulness is the aware balanced acceptance of the present experience it isn't more complicated than that it is opening to or receiving the present moment. Ah, oh, pleasant or unpleasant, just as it is, whether there's a cat in the studio doing your head in, or if you're just sat there in peace, just as it is without either clinging to it or rejecting it. Yes, don't hold back, but don't hold on, you might say. Mindful dad joke then from James. What's happening now? Jimmy! <laughs> Go back out in the garden. It's lovely and warm in the garden now. Stop being a naughty boy. I'm trying to get in through the window. Um, my wife and I, my, my wife and I can't count calories, and we have the figures to prove it. Yes, very good. And uh, your memes are for the screen right now, James. Thank you very much for these. Uh, we've got the Starship Enterprise, and we've got a a Buddha scenario as well. Let's go to the Starship Enterprise first today. Ah, your comment very thoughtfully covering the punchline there. One time at the academy, they had a group of us watch the Earth rotate from space. Did you see anything interesting, sir? Well, um, no. After 24 hours, we got bored and called it a day. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, thank you for that, James, I think. And Buddha, what makes us human? Selecting all images with the traffic lights. <laughs> That's what it's come to, unfortunately. And look, this was my opening meme. Here's to all the people with different opinions clanking our connectors together. Oh, would anyone like to clank their connectors with mine this morning? Uh, we are, and we're still friends because we're all adults. How about that? Peace, love, and happiness. I think that's an important meme at the moment. Here's to all the people with different opinions. And we're all still friends because we're all adults. Well done, everybody. Very good. Round of applause for you. If you're able to have a different opinion and still be friends with people. It's not, not everyone can do that, you know. Not everyone can do that. Um, and we have more pictures coming in of you in 1974. What a fantastic collection uh, that's emerging. So let's have a look at Anna's video now. And um, whilst I have a little sip of tea, and you could do the same. What are you drinking this morning? Coffee? Tea? Bovril? I wonder. A couple of minutes of life in, I think this is the Alcova Dam. Let's have a look.
Wow, what a beautiful, well, I was going to say a beautiful moment. We've got quite a few moments there in the Alan Show. Thank you so much, uh, Anna, for that. Um, and we've got Lee joining us soon. I think he's a bit of a twitcher as well, and a photographer, so I think he'll have appreciated that. And, of course, the, <laughs> thank you, Lee. And, of course, the, <laughs> and, and the Portuguese countryside, which I think I, he is a fan of, it's fair to say. Let's give him a nice big round of applause now. He's having a smoke in his coffee, as we as we expect. Nice big round of applause, please, for Mr. G well, Head Gardener, Lee McGrady, everybody. Good morning to you, Lee. How are you? Good morning, Joe. Are you Good a morning. cafe? Is that a, a, a cafe TV above you there? Oh, God, it is. There's one in every cafe, if not more. Why, why isn't it on? That's what I want to know. Why isn't it showing CNN or something depressing? Everybody's, everybody's sat inside watching the traffic news in there. Oh, I see. Okay. Sounds nice and peaceful. Hear a bit of bird song there. Did you like that little view of the um, Alan Tejo there? I just I just caught the last bit. I just joined you for the last bit. So, yeah, it's pretty. Now, nice time I, here, isn't it? Yeah, when I called you a twitcher, that's um, British for bird bird watcher, isn't it? I don't know if that's an international. Yeah, I, I, no, I think it's yeah, no, I think it's, it's definitely an English thing. Yeah, um, well, it's not my. I like birds. I like to see different birds, but I wouldn't go looking for them. Okay, <laughs> they just they just appear. So how how are you then? How it's, it seems very quiet in Lisbon this morning. Traffic's been a nightmare getting over. I mean, it's not the normal stop. I've been in the cafe before, my normal stops. I'm running a bit late today because oh. the traffic was shit getting over Monsanto. All right. Oh. Okay. So we'll not keep you in that case. Uh, but you wanted to talk oh, about bad. you wanted to talk about growing vegetables and what's what needs to go in the ground at the moment. I think because it is kin to crew day here on the Good Morning Portugal show. Yeah, I, I suppose Jason will speak about this as well because he'll be he'll be busy at the moment. But it's always that time of year when the schools start getting their uh, the plant pots in and all the uh, all the um, all the plug plants. So I imagine it's on everyone's mind of what they can grow and what they can't grow at this time of year. Right now, some people hearing you talking about plug plants will be thinking plug plants. I don't know if I've ever eaten a plug. Um, this is a this is um a, a, I guess a, a bit of a hack, isn't it, in the garden where you're buying seeds that have already been germinated into a convenient little plug which you then transfer into your own garden do you do you recommend that over and above people growing things from seed oh it's much easier it's much right. easier yeah right. no i would always say if you can grow, grow, grow from seed it's more fun yeah and um yeah, it's just it's just more for your money but plug plants are so cheap and it's so easy to do and you've got that instant effect Yes, they so, are very, they are very good value here in Portugal, aren't they? So, what sort of things? If somebody's new to the garden, and you know us, we, we from uh, our get out and grow days, we always like to encourage people to grow some food, whether it be on their balcony in their apartment. Everybody can grow a little bit of food, can't they? But what what are the easiest plugs for somebody who's new to this to go and buy at the, at the Portuguese market and then pop in the ground? And then what do they have to do after that? I suppose the, the e easiest one that's on sale at the moment would be the lettuce, would be the perpetual lettuce. Okay. Because they are, and I think they're a year old for five plants. You can cut the heads off them regular and just take, just take the leaf and let them regrow. So yeah. for a year or you'll get maybe 25 salad meals for two out of, out of it. So That's pretty uh, good value, isn't it? Yeah, if each plant provides five heads... You buy five plants, 25 salads for a year long, and it's fresh. It's, and you cut it and put it straight on your plate, wow. and it takes up it, it takes up no space at all. I mean, you can fit it in a small plastic pot on your balcony. How about that then? So if you're interested in growing, if, if that was part of your plan when you were moving to Portugal to grow a bit of food, no easier way than some lettuce plugs from the, from the market. What what are you looking for when you buy them? I mean, these they're all pretty good quality, aren't they? Or, or are you looking something for something that's not overgrown? That that is a or you know how, how do you choose a healthy plant? Well, at the moment, they're all pretty good condition. As as the, as April gets further to the end, you'll start getting all the scrag ends of being sold. But at the moment, everything's pretty fresh. Okay. What you do want to check is when the guy pulls up because they they, are, they come in a, in a large tray when you. Say you want fine, it pulls them out. You just want to check that the roots are all uh, solid and the yeah. soils that fall into pieces on it. Okay. And that's all you really need. You just need a good root base to 
So okay, so oh. get and, and you think in a pot is best for something like that because you can move it around in the sun and 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 uh, you could grow that on your balcony, for example. Well, if you've got space, they, they go in the ground just as good. Well, we yeah. we grow we grow in the ground at cows. Um, yeah. But in, in a pot on the balcony, they work brilliantly. Yeah, okay. they're, they're just so easy to look after. All right. Oh, look, uh, fellow uh, King. What would they be called? King to King King Tishters up there at Aquinta Salia de Porto. We haven't made it there yet, have you? But uh, I, I hope to see you up there one of these days. We'll come and see you at an open that? On the other side of the bay from me at Salia de Porto, Siobhan and uh, Patsy over there, no. they run Salia, no. uh, Aquinta Salia de Porto. So hello from Aquinta team to you on the Quinta Crew Day here on Good Morning Portugal show. Four and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie. Have you ever had that, Lee? Like I, 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 I've met pretty much all the birds that fly, but I've never met a blackbird. I buy wheatgrass. Now, you're not alone with this, Pam. My eldest, my, my lad, bought some wheatgrass uh, for the cats, thinking that they might go mad for it. And they weren't interested at all. So, Pam, somebody like Pam, who can't even grow wheatgrass here, as it turns out, is there any hope uh, for somebody who can't even grow the simplest of things like wheatgrass? Wheatgrass actually does well in buckets as well in pots. Um, and it's quick and looks good as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And cats should like it. I mean, I, I knew what our cats in England used to go mad over it. Okay. Um, tastes horrible, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, re I remember yeah, yeah, it didn't taste it. It to juice. It is disgusting. Very good for you, they say, but disgusting. And uh, in Alcabasa, for World Tree Day last month, uh, Municipio offered free plants in exchange for waste paper. That's a good deal, isn't it? And oh, and Pam's cat does love the, the wheatgrass. There, what's she doing wrong if she can't keep it alive? Is she overwatering, underwatering? What's the way to deal with wheatgrass? I imagine grass? it's not enough. I imagine it's not enough water. They, not you, enough. You, you, can, you, can, you can actually grow with a bog, you can use as bog plants, so right. you can't really, you can't really overwater it. Um, well, give your wheatgrass watered there, Pam. And how well done, Alcabasa, for giving away uh, free plants there. Anything else for the garden? Should we be pruning still, or is that behind us now, Lee? No, there's still pruning to be done. It's still very early April. Um, right. We're not really into I know the sun's come out and everyone's rushing to get everything done, but it's still very early in the season. Okay. Uh, Ten pictures of forecast to drop at the end of this week a little bit. Get a yes. bit cooler. So, right. yeah. Now, oh, well, it's, it's, just, on, mate. it's just get your veg in and sort your irrigation systems out. Make sure your grass is getting plenty of water. And again, it's spring feed. So you should be feeding your grass now, maybe with a... Uh, a weed and feed. Uh, it's a little bit expensive here in Portugal, but all fertilizers are expensive at the moment. Hold um, on a minute. Did you just say weed and feed? For your lawn, yeah. yeah. What, so the weed and feed it has a, 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 um, a herbicide and a food in it all at the same time? Yeah, it, it has a, um, what do you call it? It has a pre-emergence herbicide in it. So mm. it's, got, it's got the two chemicals. It's got a chemical to feed the grass and it's got a chemical to stop uh, seeds from germinating, which will keep your dandelions and your and your buttercups and stuff down. If you don't want those, okay. Some people do, don't they? Do you not like a wild lawn? No, it's ridiculous. It's laziness. <laughs> it's laziness. Okay. If, if, you want, if, you want, if you want a wildflower meadow or a wildflower bed, then that's fantastic. Yeah. They can be kept separately and they, and, and they can look really good. Wildflower lawns can look brilliant, but an untapped lawn just yeah. looks shabby. Guilty as charged, and I must have, have, a, have a little go at our lawn. However, um, I I'd like your view on the sturtiums as well. Mrs. M thinks that our, our neighbours must think we're um, bad neighbours, basically. I've allowed all the nasturtiums to spill over from the, the borders and the beds onto the lawn. I think it looks fantastic. But Portuguese people look at the nasturtium as a weed, I think, don't they? Well, a lot of people in England look at it as weed as well, Cal, because technically it's a weed. No, the definition, of a, the, 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 the definition of a weed is a plant in the wrong place. True. Okay, um, yeah. So if it looks good, then it's not a weed and leave it be. And the searches are great for butterflies. So at this time of year, the butterflies are just emerging. They're just getting yeah. going. So yeah. the, the searches are nice. Yeah. I'm doing my bit. I mean, it's a riot of colour. I've got yellow and orange nasturtiums. I've got geraniums in there. I've got a, a, a lilac flower. I don't know the name of that. It's on a, a shrub, shrubby tree thing. And, and this riot of colour with a little bit of jasmine uh, woven into the um, the fence on, on the street as well. It's absolutely beautiful at the moment. I, I imagine if you turn your uh, nasturtiums over, you'll see some little baby caterpillars getting going there, oh, which excellent. won't be good for your veg garden. 
but oh, okay. he could tell it would be fine. All right, thank you for that. Um, when I last saw you, and great it was to see you um, in San Martino de Porto. Did you enjoy your trip over here? Um, it was okay. It was, yeah, it was uh, <laughs> what I remember of it. An honest review from what apparently you before, Apparently we found Kent at some point. Yes. Whilst well, well, yes. drunk. I don't remember well, that. One or, yes, um, I, do, I do remember that. I, I took you into the inner chamber. We were at the Storytellers for lunch, of course. And then I took you to my man cave laundrette and bar. Do you remember that bit? And then we're going to a laundrette and bar, thinking that was quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think that's where you, you uh, spoke to Kent from. So love to you uh, again uh, this well, morning. The, 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 the drive up was horrendous. The, the weather. Because I took the day off work. Luckily, I took the day off work. Uh, so it was a fortnight on Wednesday. It was not last Wednesday, the Wednesday before. And it, it threw it down to the point where the cars were having to go slow on the motorway. It was horrendous. That's, that's on the way home, <laughs> Portugal and uh, cars going slower on the motorway. Come on, that must have been a um, really bad road. On, on the way home, Carl dropped me off, then dropped Eric off. Then I had to come back to my place. And stay over for the night because the bridges were closed. Really? Because, because of the, the weather was the weather was so bad. Yeah, a wagon oh, had blown yeah. over on the twenty fifth, and wow. Vasco Don't Get Out was closed because of a tornado. Oh yes, <laughs> it, was, it was that day, wasn't it? Well, thank you for making the pilgrimage to San Martino de Porto. It was excellent to see you here, and you do scrub up well, I have to say. And um, something you said. Don't uh, tell people. Don't, don't don't tell people that. All right, you don't want any more invitations. <laughs> Okay, um, something you said and mentioned was the uh, photography club uh, that you're part of in Lisbon. Um, is that an activity? I'm not, I'm not part of it. It's my club. I love it. Okay, you're the king, by the sound of it, the king and leader of the, what is it, the Lisbon Photographic Club? Does it have a, a grand title of that kind? No, no, no I said Lis Lisboa Photographic Club. Okay. Yeah. And can, or Lisboa yeah. Photography Club, sorry. Photography Are you club. Open new members? Yeah, but I'm a little bit selective with members. Um, <laughs> you have, you have to pass when, a rigorous selection test to join you. When I first met me, you've got to answer all the questions on Facebook. Otherwise, oh. if you don't answer all three of them, we don't, I don't let you in. Um, when I first moved on, I used to be part of a club in Rochdale. Yeah. And when I first moved on, I wasn't working so much. Um, so I was looking for a club in Lisbon. And there just wasn't one that I liked. So uh, I met a uh, another photographer and we set the club up together right, um, okay. so we're just short of a thousand members now we have regular meetups yeah um people share their images online people share advice um gear and equipment swaps just stuff like that it's, okay, it's so quite what's, basic what's the name of it again it's lisboa lisboa photographic club Okay, that's fairly straightforward, isn't it? So, Lisboa Photographic Club, if you're interested in photography and uh, you'd like to hang out with Lee um, at the weekends and take photographs, having passed the very rigorous entry requirements of joining the club, because he won't just have any old photographer in that club there. Question in from Joel Denort. Speaking of plants you can't overwater, uh, we just welcomed our first water lilies of the season in our wee pond. Now, is this a sewage system, do you think, that he's got? Or is it just a small pond, I wonder? What, what did he call it? A wee pond? A wee pond, yeah. Maybe it's a special... Um, yeah, uh, maybe it runs up in septic. Yeah, yeah. I worked on one in Todmorden uh, many, many years ago. What, reed beds? Um, yeah, yeah. It, it was a reed bed. It, it serviced maybe 150 houses. Um, it, it, yeah, it was, really, it was really nice. It was a, 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 a great little project. Yes. Uh, but the cottage iron in Scotland also fed down into a into a pond from the waste. So you've got to be careful what you put down your toilet. Obviously, you can't put too much chemical now. Because you'll see um, it in your but, bee pond later on. Wow. Well, yeah, because it'll, it'll affect the plants. It affects the bacteria. And the bacteria is what you actually need in the pond to, to maintain a healthy and safe environment. Because you can't just have your open drain running into a I small see. amount I of water. I I was, yeah, Mrs. M and I bought some plants. I think it was yesterday morning at our local plant shop in Alfa Zarao. And there were some um, very nicely packaged water lilies, I think, um, that you can, that I, I guess it's, 
the season, isn't it, for popping them in the water? And that's what Israel de Nort's done in his. I think, yeah, it's probably a Scottish turn of phrase. It's a wee pond. Uh, there. Oh, it's a small pond. He's got a small pond. He's Scottish. Okay. Not a wee, not a wee <laughs> picture of him. You know, when the, when the guest says, uh, uh, "John's, can, can I use the bathroom, please?" Yes, just <laughs> just use the wee just pond. Pee in the pond. Just pee in the pond. <laughs> Right, um, the there's a little pond in our garden there. Go on, Lee. A, a little bit of advice. When you're buying water lilies, I wouldn't buy anything that's already uh, in growth. I'd look for more of the tubers. Yes, okay. Um, because if you buy something with already growth on it, you have to find the right water level for it. Yes. Whereas if, if you buy the tuber in winter, no matter, what, no matter where you put it in the pond, it will reach the surface. But you want to be less than, less than two foot. Okay, you know, now, this is you the don't, perennial don't challenge, deep. isn't it? Because, and I think you've talked about this before. Um, if you're a, a fair weather gardener and not a professional like yourself, and you and you go at it at the at the weekends or on bank holidays, people tend to buy things that are in flower, don't they? And just want instant effects. Now, that's not always the best thing for the plants themselves, is it? I, I've had quite of I've had quite a few issues with customers in the past where I've turned up with plants with no flowers on. So, so a customer wanted um. Uh, a pot of geraniums. I would obviously buy geraniums that haven't yet come into flower. Yes. So it's just a pot of leaves. And they say, well, that's not very fitting. <laughs> but, if, but if you buy them when they're in flower, you shorten your flowering season in the pot. Yes. They've already passed the best. So yeah. Ghana said to sell plants very commonly that are past the best. So, yeah, you should always buy plants pre-flower. Okay, it's a very difficult temptation though uh, when you're in the in the plant shop there, and that's how they get you in there, isn't it? They're putting all their flowering plants out on the street. Of course, it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Right. Morning to you, Alan. Yeah. Hola from Maynard, Massachusetts. This morning, hope everyone is doing well. Well, pretty pretty good actually. Thank you, Alan. Hope you are too. Contigo, contigo. Um, our water leaves didn't die back fully this year. Now they're covering the whole pond, pretty much. Thank you, Fiona. Great to see. She always comes for the King to crew. Does Fiona? Good to see you. Um, this morning, and should we go? Uh, let's have a chat with Matt. Let's get just, your on the screen. Go just, on. Just, just, just a little bit of advice for you you don't want them to cover all of the water, you want to leave a little bit of water exposed because oh. it's done, it still needs some sunlight on, on, the, on the water. And if it's completely <laughs> covered in leaf, then that's when the sediment starts to uh, really develop and rise, and that's when the bad bacteria gets in. No, so you need to clear a little bit of your pond, it needs to be open water all the time. Nice little tip. Who doesn't like a nice little tip first thing in the morning? Now, Lee, um, this you is another thing. Up. As well as buying, as well as buying plants in flower, once they start flowering, people don't want to cut them back in the garden. But you, you need to, as you've said there with the lilies. You, you know, so otherwise you're going to choke the pond by the sound of it. Yeah, sometimes you need to be a bit. You need to be a bit aggressive with them. Yeah, I'm going um, to have to do this. The, 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 the certain plants that really need to, you need to be aggressive with, and that just encourages. Uh, better growth and fresh growth. Stuff yeah. like lavender, stuff like lavender and heather, um, they do like to be attacked regular because that <laughs> encourages new growth from the base and stops it from becoming woody. Yes, yeah. which leads to the, the parlour game. If you were a plant, what would you be? One that likes to be attacked on a regular basis or one left alone in the dark? Uh, yeah, thanks, Lee, says Fiona. I do remove some as I'm aware the fish need to access it. She's got fish as well. Access the surface from time to time. And Pam saying UV light disinfects water. Now, don't tell him, but we're going to bring Matty onto the screen who's worshipping the sun. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> We haven't got any sound for you, Matty. But the pictures tell t say everything, basically. Morning, Bon dia. I, 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 had, I had myself muted. <laughs> Matty, you are sunning yourself like the king lion of a pride there in your on your land. It's a it's a very different picture to a few months ago. How are you? How's it going there? Um. Well, as everybody else, I'm very busy. Yeah. And maybe you can see in the background. Oh, look at this, I Lee. Go on, mate. Go on. It, it needs streaming. Quite a lot. Streaming. Lee, you need to get over there with your streamer, mate. I've seen your video. Oh, I, I, I do have a streamer. And okay. uh, well, uh, it, we're coming up now to the uh, land clearance deadline, which is the end of the month this, this year. So you really need to be on it before the fire brigade come calling. Right. And exactly. So tell us, tell us more about that. And this is one of the pitfalls, isn't it? As well, as, uh, we've we've talked about buying plants in flower. 
People also come to Portugal and buy loads of land because they can. This is the downside, right, Matty, when you realise you've got a, a clearance deadline and you've got 5,000 hectares of um, canna and weeds that you need to bash back. Is that what it's looking like for yeah. you? Well, um, I'm not going to clean all my land because I don't think I have to, but um, everything around the, the olive trees I want to cut down because it's nice when I see my dog walking around instead of being covered by the weeds. <laughs> Just movement of grass. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah. let me show you. I have I have a strimmer. Oh. And I have a new toy. What's he got? What's this new toy? What is it? What is that? It's a uh, um, they call it uh, uh, weed fox, and it's uh, for using hot water instead of any chemicals. Weed fox, did you call it? Yep, it's uh, it's a German company, and uh, it's actually uh, hold on a minute. Early... He's shaking his head. He's not happy about this. <laughs> What's up with him? There's one born every day, isn't there? <laughs> what? He's not happy about this. <laughs> hot water. Yes, yes, hot water. 90 degrees water. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, the, the, the product description says it's working like uh, the, the weed killer with the flames or heat. Yes. But uh, the hot water also gets down to the roots. And no, it no doesn't. Chemicals. No, it doesn't. No chemicals. no chemicals. He's really upset, Lee, this morning. I knew no, it, it really cool. doesn't. It really doesn't get down to the roots, especially in Portugal, where plants are rooted really deeply. It's yeah. great. It just. I've got a plot of land on Mars. I can sell you, Matt, if you want. Oh, he's so naughty, what? isn't he? Grumpy bugger. A, a, lot, a plot of land no, on Mars. It's not, yeah, I've got a plot of land on Mars. It's it's perfect for you. I'll sell it to you tomorrow. I'll send you the paperwork over. Come oh, on, cheer up. <laughs> I, have one, I have one too, and on Venus and, and on the moon. <laughs> That's right. How are you going to get your hot water weeder up there? <laughs> I like this. <laughs> now, presumably, Matty, this is from a, a, you know, I think the Germans are very much on the bio, um, caring for the planet vibe here, right? Uh, unlike Lee, who's happy to spray everything in sight with... Un no, I'm not happy to. I'm not happy to play with that. I'm happy to use it when it needs to be used and use it professionally. Right. Hot water. Hot water does not work. Salt does not work. Right. You either make the effort and pull it out by hand, or you nuke it with a good chemical. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll see. I, especially I think... when you've got land the size of Matty's, especially when you've got enough land to go at where you need to do it. It's just right. hard work. Matty's Doing the hard surprised. things. Challenge. And people Matty's try and find excuses not to do it. Okay. He's yeah. very grumpy this morning, isn't he, Matty? But we'll see. I, you're going to try your toy. I'm not. You? I'm not. But it's, it's that time of year when all these products come on the market and the last a year, the last two years, when people realise they're rubbish, then they buy, the, they buy the bins in a year and a half because it just don't work. What? You got told. I mean, yeah, Matty. Carl, Carl, Lee has the experience. If he says so, it's true. Okay. I have no doubt. What are you going to go back to Leroy Merlin with your receipt and get a proper flamethrower? No, no, it was, it was ordered by Amazon. And it's actually an early birthday present for my mother, so I'm not oh. going to return it. I'm oh. going to use it. Oh. Good for you, Matty. Hope you feel badly. <laughs> present from his mum. No, no. <laughs> but if it, if it, if it warms the water up, maybe could use it for making cups of tea with when he's out and about oh. on the land. That did occur to me. When Lee arrives and he wants a brew, you can get your, your hot water Instant weed. Instant hot around. water. That's right. And mash up a cup of tea with it. So it's not completely... Or turn, or turn it into a shower unit so you can have a shower outside. Yes, hot there shower. You there you go. Very good. Assorted. 90 degrees. That shouldn't hurt at all. Right. What else should um, Matty be thinking about? This is the first year on the land with all of these massive weeds growing everywhere. What, what should he be aware of, Lee? Um... First of all, he should try and limit his expectations of what he can do. So limit the amount of land he tries to use all at one go. Okay. You see loads of people come, come, come into small holdings and think they, they need to motivate everything. Yeah. And you just can't, you can't maintain it through the year. That's Gary, that uh, is. Yeah. So you, you end up with half a job done across the board rather than concentrating on a small area and doing just enough for this year. And then just enough for next year. And just, so then you can spread out. Um, it costs a lot of money as well. It costs a lot of money to to uh, 
to do gardening on a bigger scale like Matt is doing. Yeah. Matt is not gardening. Matt, Matt, Matt is more um, a small older and it costs a lot of money to get started. And it, yeah. it, it's common for people to throw hundreds and thousands at it. Yes. And you don't need to. You just need to take your time, beg, steal and borrow, reuse things rather than buying from you. And just don't overface yourself. Just don't do too much this year. Good advice, Matty, right? I think you know you're probably you've had chats with Matt, with Lee about this before, I'm guessing. Yeah, also also with Jess. And um I am starting small, I think. So uh this this will be my first uh my first area to, to plant anything. Yeah. And another another thing I want to focus this year on is my olive trees, which will be harvested this year and a little bit pruned during the ha harvest. And I'll just uh, take it from there. Very good. That does look like a modest veg patch. Uh, if Pete Bleach was here, he would be saying that's where the bodies are buried, of course. Um, but what do, you, what, what do you intend to put in there, Matty? Pete, Pete I Bleach is the really... Pete's done really well this year. His new, his new polytunnel is excellent. And they've had their first radishes out this week. Um, yeah, he, yes, he sent me a picture of his radish. Really well. uh, yeah. Yes, yes, really I did well. share that on the screen. So go on, Matty, what are you what are you planning to grow? I don't I don't know yet because I uh, I leave that uh, uh, black tarp for a couple more weeks so that uh, everything underneath it is dead. Yeah. And before I remove it, I need to put up a fence around it, just in case the sheep come over. Because oh, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to plant anything for them, but for me. That's that, <laughs> yes. I, so I, I think Lee, Matty is really listening to this advice here to, to start modestly, and and you know just take it easy, rein in the, the biggest of his aspirations, and just be a bit more practical. And actually get something that that uh, that can be enjoyed rather than eaten by pests well, or overdoing rather, it. Rather than put a fence up that you're going to have to take down when you extend your garden, Matty, have a look at the cheaper electric fences because they can be extended. So you can, if it's just for stock, if it's just for sheep, have a yeah. look at the cheap electric fences because you can you can buy what a uh, one hundred meter fence. But you can extend onto that every year. So as your veg garden gets bigger, you can extend your electric fence. It's much cheaper and much more effective. And it's easy to move rather than putting a permanent well, fence on the top I, I, of the I was thinking about reusing some metal fence that is already on my uh, riverfront because I don't want to fence my, my river. So I just I, I thought about uh, just rolling it up and, and reuse that. Very good. Even Compared better. Them. Even better. Recycling and reusing it. Yep, perfect. Well, we got uh, Matty's a natural for sure, isn't he? This is great, uh, what he's telling us here and his approach. You obviously thought about it a lot, Matty. What other plans have you got? Have you got that borehole in yet? Because that was a concern, wasn't it, before? that They were taking their time on that. Is the borehole in? Please don't mention the borehole. Oh. Um, <laughs> this is uh, getting ridiculous. The company doesn't uh, reply to my messages or taking my calls. Oh. And I think the last thing I do with them is going to their office and ask them what's going on. Right. Because I still have no idea if and when they come. Oh. And uh, if that last action going to the office is uh, fruitless, then I have to find somebody else. Right, okay. Um, have you heard of this before, Matt? You... Lee, is oh, yeah. A... All... You call... Yeah, all the time. The, the, the... Part of the problem is that the government will give out licenses so you've got your license, but then they put a stop on people actually drilling. So they put a stop on the company's drilling. Even though you've got a license, you can't find a company that will drill for you. Hmm. So it, it does become an issue. And in Portugal, working with tradesmen and small companies is always difficult. It's, there's always a there's always an issue. There's always a bump in the road. Nothing straightforward. Bump in the road. Yeah. If, if, if it's the case that that company is not allowed to drill anymore this year, that's fine, but tell me, you know. Yeah, yeah. If I know what's going on, I can anticipate. Yes. But if I if you just refuse to communicate, then I don't know anything. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Matty. So that's the missing link at the moment, is it? I mean, everything else seemed to be coming together really nicely when we last spoke to you. Yeah, I mean, I have I have now uh, 
uh, running water in my mobile home by yeah. using where is it? Where is it? Oh, there's the mobile home. And yeah. your IBC. Up here is the IBC, yeah. which I fill with water from my well. And um, I have a, what's it called? Home water work, which is a pump with a, a pressure vessel. And that uh, puts uh, one and a half to three bars of pressure on the pipes. Yeah. Only issue I have at the moment is the, the algaes that build up in the, in the IBC. And the position of it is a little bit awkward to clean it. So I have to find a way let's, to get well, the, let's if, ask you go, if, if, if you go online, IBC. If, if, if you go online, the, I, I watched a YouTube video recently of a guy in the States or maybe Australia that had the same issue. Uh, and he was using uh, a natural uh, bacteria that he found online that you can add to the tank. And that, and that okay. clears it up and keeps it clear. So if I can find the YouTube video, I'm going to send it to you. Very good. Thanks that for that, great. Lee. That would be great. Another question for Lee. We have been looking for seed, uh, a seed and fertilizer spreader. Do you know where we can buy one? We've looked at Leroy Melin and our local Brico. What is a seed and fertilizer spreader? I'm no, it sounds obvious, but... It's a, it it's, a, it's a little bucket with two wheels that you walk behind. And as you propel it, it spins a disc underneath the bucket and that yeah. casts out your seed and your, and your fertilizer. Oh, okay. uh, I have a small, I have a small handheld one that I use on the small gardens. Um, I, would, I would check Agriloja actually. Well, yeah, I was going to say Agriloja will have a, or any of the um, the still stores uh, yeah. or any of the local machine shops. I don't know where they are in Portugal, but I know they're available around there. But they're not cheap. You're talking two hundred euros for decent. Uh, my goodness. Okay, Joel Dino, great minds think alike. Well, have you looked at the, 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 the chain of stores? Very good. Well, the problem is when you're buying a fertilizer spreader, especially when you're buying a big one, you're only going to use it two, three times a year max. Mm. So sometimes it's easy to rent one or find a friend that has one. So right. can, start a consortium. Uh, yes. Well, start. <laughs> yeah, if you've, got, if you've got a neighbor that's got one, uh, like I say, it sits in the back of the shed. For eleven months of the year, so right. well, you know, buy a pack of beer and borrow, the borrow the neighbours, borrow the neighbours' seed and fertilizer spreader. Thank you very much for that, Lee. Um, more coming in about the hot water treatment of weeds. Um, Joel de Nort says it can make. He talks Yorkshire. Look, it can make a right large pot of tea, a garden pot of tea. That is, that, I think, that is a good bit of multitasking for this new bit of kit. It's not solar powered, though, is it? As Michael Whitby's suggesting, because it's never going to get up to very high, high temperature if it's solar powered. It's though. it's, it's uh, quite um, power hungry with three thousand five hundred watts. Woo! It is a kettle. It is a kettle. It's just literally a kettle on your back. Yeah. Sounds really dangerous. You say you wear a kettle well, strapped to your back. Like I, would say, I, 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 I was actually thinking that when he said it because uh, I've in the past overfilled my backpacks. So when you pick them up, you get a little spillage from the top. You wouldn't want that spilling down your back, would you? You wouldn't. And is it truly that you've no. never had a hair grow on your back or neck since? <laughs> well, it's actually you not did. on my back. It, it, it has wheels. Um, oh, okay. All right. We're back, we're back to the. I'm intrigued by this thing. Uh, it's definitely. Let's have another. Oh, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed by it. We know you're annoyed by it. You can barely can. But I like the. It's what's the German name for it? Because that sounds like fun. The Unkraut Fuchs. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it, it's it's translated wheat pot. We, you can find it on the on the German Amazon if you're interested. Yes. Could you just show us the box again? Because we need to laugh at the name. For the, okay. those that are immature among us, like Lee, what's? Could you, could you read this out for us, please, Lee? If we go a bit closer, um, I, I can't. I can't see it. I'm, right, I'm a on the phone. Please, a bit closer, closer, closer. The un, the unkraut fox. Oh, I see. Uh, fox is fox. In German. Okay, got it now. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Quick, because Lee's probably got to go to work in a minute. I think he's enjoying himself this morning with us. He's, he's stuck around for a long time. I like Agrilosia. That's where I buy ducks. Who says Thunder Duck? Did someone say garden pot? Not that kind. Obrigado for the feedback. There you go for Michael Barton. And I've heard 
of people. Is, is it 420 yet? Is it tw oh, in four days' time, it'll be the 20th of April. I've heard of people using ozone to control algae and cleaning for swimming pools. Maybe that would work, says James. Thank you. And the electric fence is solar-powered, not the, not the weed box there. Okay, so solar-powered electric fence. Does that work? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. clever. They're, they're okay, and like I said, they're, they're extendable, and they can move them around uh, when and if you need them. So it's not a permanent, it's not a permanent fence. All right. Um, Where you get them, uh, Lee, uh, uh, Leroy Merlin or Rico or Aquilosia? Oh, I wouldn't buy one from yeah. Leroy Merlin. I'm not even sure if you've got a minute, Leroy Merlin, but your Aquilosia will have a bit, definitely. But the, yeah. uh, if you do buy one from Leroy Merlin, it'll probably have a nice a nice Kath Kidston finish on it, won't it? And be three times the price of every other place. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be warned. I yeah. dug up a weed in my garden the other day that was over 40 centimetres in length. Wow, Not sure how the hot water would be by the time it settles that far. All right. Well, ease, ease off, everybody, on the hot water. Because, weed. because of the environment here, the weeds and the, uh, and, and, the, and the grasses really need to get a deep root system. Yes. So they can access water up from, uh, from deeper down in the ground. Yeah, so there are, there are weeds that get super oh. deep. Yeah. Of course, of course. Yes, they've got to go deep in this climate. Um, Agrilosia is where we also got our four goldfish uh, page ago. They usually have a really good pet section. Do they do bacheliao in the, in the wild in Agrilosia as well, I wonder? Um, anything else then, Matthew? Loving your update and loving the blue sky here at Quinta Andre Aguas. Have you been finding any time to make videos off of your YouTube channel of the same name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every Great. Friday at 3 Portugal time, there's a new video. Sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, sometimes yeah. boring, sometimes not. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very honest review of your own work there. Okay, so <laughs> not talking about the borehole. What's next there at the Quintan Traguas? Well, like I said earlier, I need to get going with the streaming and um, yeah, at least at least the area around the ruin and down around all the other trees. Yeah. Um, you know, like this area until the under the solar panels, mm. everywhere there and behind the house and the wall and everywhere here. <clears throat> oh, it looks and, lovely. Uh, I love in that blue when, sky. Once, once I'm done with the uh, streaming, I'm gonna try the wheat fox on here between the the granite plates. Uh huh. And, that looks like uh, that yeah. And see how that works because until now I was pulling them out all the time. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, my my hope is that uh, the hot water does something. Yeah. And uh, they come less often. Yeah. And also I hope that it's not like you need three hours for ten centimeter stretch, but that it's you know a little bit quicker. <laughs> yes. Very <laughs> so good. You okay. Don't spend all day. And I only can use the thing when the sun is shining because it's, like I said, uses quite a lot of uh, electricity. Oh, of course. And you'll, you'll, you'll be using your solar power for doing that. My goodness. That's, this is amazing. And so the adjustment to life, that's going well for you and the dog, presumably, as well. He's loving it in the countryside, isn't he? Where is he? Is that him there in the shade? The other one? Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I need to find the other one. Oh, he he has... Uh, no, she has usually she has a special place. Oh, okay. She always she always lies here. Yeah, there she is. Hola, bon dia. Oh, look. So, so they're, they're they're loving life in the new place, are they? And, and so are you. Oh, yeah, of, course. of course. I uh, uh, my my morning routine uh, once I once I'm dressed uh, is usually to uh, have a walk around the borders of my land. Nice. And both dogs accompany me and uh, there's one spot where the the old lady of mine takes a bath every every time we pass there wonderful so yeah they they enjoy uh, and and uh, the the young one he is uh, running around sniffing and checking what animals have passed our land at night brilliant <laughs> so uh, the 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 thing is once we are back which usually is between 20 minutes and 40 minutes depending what i'm doing on the way um yeah. they are both like tired or i, I wouldn't i wouldn't say exhausted but they have uh, a good loss of energy 
<clears throat> so I don't need to do any games with them or, you know, play fetch that day. And of course, my, my young one has to accompany any car that passes by with um, um, audio hints that he's not welcome. <laughs> <clears throat> Same for any walkers by and uh, that gives him a little bit more exercise. Yeah. And um, one more project I, uh, I have in mind for the future, but I need to source the materials first is building a smoke-free burn barrel. Oh, okay. You're going to be smoking your meat? No, it's just to burn the garden waste. Oh, I see. Okay, smoke-free. But me, how, how does that work? It's a very high temperature, presumably. Mm, no, it's it's basically two barrels in each other. So you have to, to take two identical barrels, make one smaller in diameter, and a lot of holes and then the uh, the air gets sucked from below between the two barrels gets hot and at the top it comes into the area where the flame is and it, uh, there's then a second ignition which burns the the smoke wow that's okay. that's interesting okay and that's a quick way to get rid of your waste and you can put the ash back on the ground exactly that's the idea wow. and um Together. You can you can you can search on Google smokeless burn barrel three words yeah. and you should find the video I found with the explanation on how to do it. Very good. So very good. I don't know where Lee's gone. What? I think Lee's, Lee I don't know where Lee's gone. I think he's gone to get another cup of coffee. Give us a thumbs up, Jason, if you're ready to join us with your blue sky in central Portugal. He is. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Look at this blue skies everywhere, gentlemen. Lovely to see you, Jason. How are you, mate? Morning, guys. I'm doing good, thank you. How are you all? We're really good. It's so lovely to see you both with your beautiful central Portugal blue skies behind you. Beautiful spring days for you both. What's what's new at Quinta Essencial? Oh, well, I'm just having a little bit of a walk around. Um, I'm just having a look at a little couple of some of my citrus trees. I don't know if you can see how many flowers. Oh, the citrus is there. blooming. I bet they smell great as it well, don't they? It smells smell absolutely some lemon blossom, amazing. Really. Yeah, I bet. We'll just zoom in there. Give us another look at that, Jason. Oh, that will smell great, won't it? Lemon blossom. Beautiful. And so, because um, the, uh, <clears throat> obviously it's been uh, quite moist. I think moist is a word that we could use for this winter. Definitely. Who doesn't like that first thing in the morning? Come on. <laughs> um, like all of my... So, I only plant three trees a year now because I've worked out that that's as many as I can actually handle keeping alive in a year. Very sensible. And so I've got my, my trees that I planted last year, which are looking really good. So I've got one that's a pomegranate, which pomegranate. is looking pretty good. Yeah, very nice. And then my fig tree, which I planted last year, is going great guns. Yeah, that, that was That was just a brown stick last year. And then this, this is a... Uh, pomegranate as well which is absolutely flying away at the moment mm, but um it's... my favorite new one that i've put in this year and seems to be going really really well which i'm keen on because uh, i really enjoy the fruit is a uh, diaspero or oh wonderful pers yeah persimmon. Persimmon. yeah my favorite and that's only gone in this year and it's uh not faulted at all and really, really seems to be going for it. And so I'm um, over the moon that we did have all that wet. Yeah. But um, it brought the trees on in quite a good way. I mean, my olive trees are absolutely covered. They're just about to burst into flower in the next week or two. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. <clears throat> um, I'm hoping it's going to be more than 100 litres this year of olive yep. oil wonderful which would be awesome yep and for um, sale in the shop it will be for sale in the shop yeah around about november time is when yep. the uh the olive harvest generally comes in fabulous and so obviously we've got a long way to go yet they're just at that really delicate point and so they're okay at the moment but once i actually turn to flowers if we get some heavy rain and high wind we're still not quite out of the woods yet, but it's okay. um it's looking good so far. 
And then today I'm just getting ready. I've been uh, about two millennia ago when the man cave guys came and uh, helped me to uh, start building the shop. Lee very kindly put in the bare bones of an irrigation system for me. Yeah. And so now it's stopped raining. It's uh, time to uh, get that solidified and get it all going in. And so today's job is finish making up all the connections. And you can see the pipe down here, but I've got everything connected up to my IBC tanks. Yeah. What do you do about algae in those? Because Matthew was talking about having a problem with algae in his in his tank. Well, well, I I'm, I don't let the water sit there for long enough to garner any algae. Okay. Because I've got I've got three I've got three thousand liters there. Um, that will only last me at the moment. That would last me two days. But in the heat of the summer, I'll be I'll be doing three uh, um, probably three thousand liters a day just in watering. And wow. so, so but, you're, the, you're not letting the grass grow to to, to use another gardening. Yeah, method. but um, mm. the the easiest way is black it out so no light can get onto it. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, oxygen, light, water, they're the building blocks of life. Of and course. So, yeah. That's kind of what we, uh, what you need to get rid of. So keep them in the shade, or some people wrap black plastic around them. Yeah, I don't know. It's or uh, you could get some wood and build like a little wooden can, like plank it out and build a little wooden containment or something. That would probably go quite well. There you go, Matty. Who I think we're going for a bike ride with now, with, with <laughs> around the <laughs> around the land possibly. Right. So, uh, go on, Jay. Sorry. Yeah, and so we're just starting to get a bit more infrastructure in. And so I'm just building a little frame to go over my strawberries. Beautiful. Because I've uh, started getting some strawberries and the birds seem to like them just as much as uh, we do. And so get those covered up and then... Jay, Jason, how do you... Uh, how, how do you stop the slugs from getting to your strawberries being a... Uh, a guy that doesn't like to use chemicals. Are you are you raising them off the ground? Are you putting some raw bed underneath them? So I'm, I mulch really well with leaves around my strawberries. Um, and then the only thing other than that is I just try to have as little debris laying around as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's nothing for them to hide under during the day and stuff like that. Um, We've had bigger problems with them in the polytunnel um, because they, uh, they've they got plenty of stuff to climb up. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've just laid salt out right, to, to stop those guys, but obviously not on the water. Um, and so at the moment, we are busily putting in loads and loads and loads of seedlings. There's some, Fantastic. Uh, Look at this. These are some sweet potato slips that I'm just rooting now. Yeah. Uh, going to grow them in amongst with my tomatoes. Uh, they'll give really good ground cover, uh, lo lots of leaves on the floor, which help protect the soil. And the sweet potatoes and tomatoes work together, so you, you won't end up with blight and... Um, the sweet potato gets rid of some of the pests that uh, would normally like to eat your tomatoes. What else have we got in here? Uh, we've got sunflowers, all sorts of things, cabbages, courgettes, all sorts of stuff going on. Oh, looks fantastic. Just this, still, still working out of my makeshift polytunnel because... Um, You're a stufa. Just, just about got the... Uh, all the building permits and everything sorted for the shop now and so i wanted to uh get one project finished before i have to go and tell them that i want to build something else yeah fair play fair um, play so you're building what a bigger polytunnel next yeah the polytunnel is eight meters wide by 24 meters long and four and a half meters high and so it's a uh, 24 quite, meters 24 meters long yeah right okay Oh, we're um, the Grady's on the move. Are we going to say goodbye to you, Lee? Or are we going to get see a, a view of... Oh, okay. Goodbye. 
<laughs> You've muted as well, but don't unmute now while you're while you're driving. Just leave it where it is. All right. He's good. he's off to his next job, I think. And very nice greeting to, and same to you, Lee, as well. Jason, this is amazing. Scott's here this morning. Great to see the progress of his hard work. I mean, that's equally for Matty or for Jason, as you can see on the screen. Um, Nunu is here. I forgot to say hi to Nunu a little bit earlier on. And he's saying what a great crew we've got lined up on the screen uh, this morning. Absolutely right uh, there, Nunu. And says your uh, your essential oil is really tasty. Uh, Quinta Essential. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Deagle's got an olive tree in Belfast after four years. He's got the princely sum or amount of olives. Three. Three olives, plenty of leaves, but sheltered this winter in the greenhouse. Also feed well with homemade seaweed mix. So maybe not quite a litre for you this year, Deagle, but keep going, mate. Must be beautiful to see an olive oil tree uh, or an olive tree in Belfast there on a winter's day. Um, there was a question uh, for you chaps here because your central Portugal guy is not a million miles away from Michael here. What's the best uh, alternative to Leroy Merlin in the central Portugal area? Would you both go to Agriloja for those sorts of things? Um, it depends. I mean, need. yeah, it depends where, what you need. Yeah, of course. Go on. Uh, where, let's see where, Jason where, first. Where, where we are, we have uh, a lot of obviously, we have Agriloja and the big stores and stuff like that, but we also have some small independent guys <clears throat> who are very knowledgeable and tend to have just a little bit more time. Yeah. And if they're local and in your area, and so like my, my nearest agrologia is sort of 35, 40 minutes away. And so quite often I've bought things from them that don't quite work or break. And it's quite a, quite a mission to turn it round and go and get it sorted again. Mm. Um, but like all of my irrigation supplies and stuff like that, that's just local guys. Um, electric fencing also was local guys, and okay. so so it's a matter yeah. of finding these local. I mean, they're not going to be advertising. It's just people in the know. You have to ask your neighbours, don't you, to find out where. Ask your neighbours is your best bet. Yeah, um, yeah. and then obviously for building supplies, I've got to say, apart from screws or nails, I, I, I wouldn't particularly buy any wood or anything from Leroy Merlin, and yeah. unless you're trying to construct a wooden banana. <laughs> <laughs> there's the timber review for you it's true isn't it it can be a little bit bendy from Leroy's for sure so go to your local sawmill you've got fantastic sawmills in central Portugal haven't you it's finding them that's the, the, the challenge yeah yeah um yeah we've got a few by us um with the with the local ones you really have to stipulate so if you want pine you know you have to tell them you want dry pine yes because otherwise they'll, they'll cut it and something you build something it starts out weighing a ton and at the end of three months it only weighs 100 kilos as all yes. the water comes out of it but you know it's half the then, size and then i'm I'm like matty i need to um think about getting my grass cut right look at that um, i'm really jealous all of you have got blue skies behind you this morning it's fantastic oh we're, and we're watching lee at work as well in the neighborhoods south of the river Liz, but this is a fantastic scene. Look, a man at work. Um, I'm exhausted already just watching him. Look at him go. <laughs> not, not sure. Oh, he's going to be streaming in a minute. We might have some stream cam action in, in a little while. What you, you, he's needed in your gardens, I think. There, you can, uh, you, you, you can watch me change the head on the swimmer live online. Well, that I mean, I can't, a, I can't think of this is a blade, can't... yeah. And I need twine for today, so that's me. First job of the day. Okay. All right. Well, that will be running in the background there. So what else is new, Jason? I mean, as Lee was saying earlier on, this is probably the busiest time of the year for you, isn't it? So you're, you're keeping busy. Uh, we're, we're absolutely flat out. We're fighting on every single front at the moment. Um, brilliantly, the bit of land up the top, I've already strimmed that. That's already been done. Um, right. It's just the bit down the bottom where I need to... Uh, get the tractor out and go and get that all uh, knocked down. I'm hoping I've timed it just right and I shouldn't have too much seed in it. And then while it's still green and laying on the floor, that's what I'll use to mulch all my vegetables this year. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I've got the irrigation in and running, uh, we'll get some, as, as the irrigation goes in, we're going to plant next to it. 
instantly cover with mulch, uh, which should hopefully keep some of the weeds down. But um, the main thing is it helps to retain moisture. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to end up using a lot less water than if you just water straight onto bare ground. Um, yes. <clears throat> the other advantage we find with the irrigation system is because you're watering at the root. And so you don't get any splashback onto the stems or onto the leaves of your plants. Uh, because once the sun comes out, that little droplet of water on the leaves acts like a magnifying glass. Yeah. And you can burn, burn your plants. Um, and you think you're doing them good by watering them. And it's like you can sort of damage the cells in the leaves and which stops photosynthesis quite so much. And uh, they'll probably survive, but they'll just be a little bit behind all the time. That's what Matt um, is going to be doing to his weeds, He's scorching them a little bit. And Squire of the Shires loves the idea of the weed fox, Matty, a chemical-free alternative there. Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That on, on the plants you want, it can hurt them. And on the plants you don't want, it doesn't seem <laughs> – it leaves very doubtful yeah. of the effectiveness. But that's that's life in the garden for you, I guess. Um, but, Matty, if you were after a solar energizer for electric fencing, that's my unit there. Oh, let me zoom in on that. So the, here we are. We're seeing the things we're talking about this morning. Live action of a strimmer head being changed and now a solar unit for powering up your electric fence. What, what are yeah. you using that for, Jason? So uh, what I use that for, um, that is going to go around my vegetables. Yeah. Around my veg plot to stop the naughty piglets. Oh, okay. The javali are at it, are they? Yeah, I'm going. I'm I'm going um, double security for the naughty piglets this year, right? Because uh, in oh, in two weeks' time, we've got a new addition coming to the Kinta in the form of Bob the dog. Way fantastic! Um, and so we've we've been working with a couple with a view to adopt this guy. Bless him, he was found at a petrol station. Really? When he was like a tiny little wee thing, and this couple took him in, um, and they look after him. He's in their house, um, which was great when he was a puppy, but yeah. because he's a Raffaello Alentejano dog, big fella. Within a year, his head comes to my hip, <laughs> and he, he weighs just over fifty kilograms. And so, wow. okay. Um, but what he does have is a really good built-in woof, yes. which um, will hopefully keep the, the javelin out of the way. Um, That's wonderful. So he's a good match for, for the wild boar, and uh, he's going to be part of your, as you put it, the double security system, electric fencing and a dog. Go on, Matty. Um, if, if you didn't know already, I would uh, take the dog on a walk around your border so he can uh, spread his scent. That will also help to avoid unwanted guests. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, because um, he's a cattle, is what they call like a pastoral cattle dog breed. And so he's perfectly suited for us. I'm going to build him a kennel outside. He's going to live outside all the time. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm, I'm going to show him, walk him around the property a few times. Because I need to show him where to go to the toilet and all this kind of thing and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But then I'm hoping, just like the everybody else in my family, they're pretty free to do whatever they'd like to do. It's like if I haven't got any expectations of him other than um, don't make the inside of my truck too hairy. That would be nice. <laughs> I don't think he's going to agree to that somehow. Um, here's another solution for your for your strimming. It looks like pony heaven with all that grass to graze. What about livestock that would chew your, you, uh, you know, you're a natural strimmer? Have you thought of that, Jason? Oh, I, I, I tried doing sheep a, a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. And there he goes. Cheers, Lee. Is he off now? Sorry, mate, to interrupt you there, Jason. But I think Lee's... Jason, Lee, Jason speak to you soon. Matty, catch you later. Carl. See you soon, bro. Cheers, mate. Have, go. have, have, a, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. You too. Bon dia. Right there, off he goes there. Oh, hold on a minute. We need lost Jason as well there. So Lee off to work. He, we saw him successfully change the head of his trimmer. That was some of the most riveting TV you'll have seen for a long time. Um, back to you, Jason. The sheep. You you said you were doing sheep last year. D yeah, Doug, I, I, had, 
I had three sheep. They were called Eunice, Margaret, and Barbara. Barbara. Um, <clears throat> um, and they were wonderful. Apart from what I learned was that if sheep can conceive of a way to harm or kill themselves, they will definitely try it. Um, <laughs> Seriously? Oh, they are pretty... They're, they're not the brightest of animals, if I'm completely fair. Okay. Um, and so when we first got them, my favourite sound in the world was... <laughs> it sounded wonderful. Yeah. After six months, my least favourite sound in the world would be at half past three, quarter to four in the morning. Yeah. And you go outside, um, one of the sheep would have completely wrapped its head around and around the electrical fence tape. Yeah. Trying to get out. And obviously, the more it struggled, the more it had tightened up. Yeah. I'll have to be out there at quarter to four in the morning in the heaving rain trying to sort it out, rebuild a fence and do all of that stuff. And so... <clears throat> Anybody with vegetarian sensibilities, please don't judge me. But it turned out they looked much better in my freezer than they did in my field. Not making that sound anymore. Okay. No. All right. Okay, you you gave them an assisted way out by the sound of it there, Jason. Okay. Um, and this is what people don't see, right, is you in the middle of the night unwrapping a sheep from a fence. This is what people see. And when I saw this online, the, the your boxes – of fruit yeah. that you're creating that's the that's the that's the pack <clears throat> shot isn't it? that's the instagram picture of life on your farm the, pro yeah. the results to produce and, and you don't get to the sense that you've been out wrangling sheep at 3 30 in the morning but that my friend is, is what makes it all worthwhile presumably that is so beautiful when i saw i was really taken um by this picture that you posted you know getting the boxes ready for your customers that's that's something to be proud of right there isn't it um yeah we we're well, we think that the the boxes that we put together, so at the moment, <clears throat> traditionally, December, January, February, there'd be three months that you haven't got anything coming out of your horter. And so <clears throat> at the moment, I buy in vegetables, buy in and sell vegetables. As over the next, within a month, more and more stuff will be coming out of our farm. Um, and we'll be able to add some of that into what we supply for people. Um, <clears throat> but no, we really, we we really enjoy the fact that we, it feels like we're nourishing people. We're not just feeding them; we're nourishing yeah. people. Well said. Um, um, with that in mind, this this is just hot off the press, as they say. What you got? Um, the cider. Has, oh, look at that. Quinta Essencio Cider. It's overwintered. Um, and so we had our first hot day the other day and we decided that we were going to give it a little bit of a try. Um, popped the lid off the top. It went 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 off like a champagne bottle, like Wonderful. loads of bubbles everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it turns out we've made a clear, dry, and sparkling cider, which hits the back of the throat at around about eight and a half percent. Beautiful. Uh, that's a very refreshing drink on a hot day here in Portugal. Love the sound of that. And I think it's difficult to find decent cider in Portugal. You can buy that mass-produced stuff, can't you? The big brands. But why do people yeah. not? Why do people not brew cider in Portugal generally? Well, I asked my neighbours about it, and when I said, "Why don't you make cider?" Um, they kind of looked at me and said. Because we have grapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, of course. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's, why bother? It's, it's physically quite hard work doing cider because um, it's actually quite hard to get the juice out of the apples. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those ones, the longer the apples have fallen off the tree and sit on the floor, it's like you don't want them at their eating freshness. Mm -hmm. It's like you just want them to go a little bit soft and a, and a little, and then they're much easier to get the juice out of. Mm, but nice. um, it normally takes me a couple of days with my uh, fruit press trying to get all of the juice out of them. And so it's a bit more work than the, than the grapes as well. Yes. Okay. But well worth it by the sound of it. Go on, Matty. You've got to go. 
Oh, we need you to unmute there, mate. Of course. <laughs> I uh, I need to go to, to the to the local cafe and meet the local baker to get my fresh bread. Listen to him. If if all of the things he's shown us weren't enough, he's also going to the local cafe to get freshly baked bread from the local baker in central Portugal. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Matty, uh, for being here. So all the best, Matty, and thank you see for you your update. Look, yeah, see you next month. Looking forward to that. Quinta on Dragwash every Friday. A new video from Matty. All the best, mate. Take care. Lots of love to you and the dogs. See you, mate. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. Bye for now. There he goes. That is I'm so wonderful. I mean, I, I think I've chosen the right name today. Um, the Portugal Kinter Crew Living the Dream. Because we're seeing it at the moment, aren't we? We are seeing the, the fruits of your labor, you know, the best of times after this cold and wet winter. It's really coming into its own now, isn't it? This is the real high. Yeah. Um, it feels like a different place right yeah. now. Um, kind of made us remember why we moved here. You know, just just a simple thing like working during the day, mm. uh, get yourself a nice lunch together, and just sit out on the grass on a on a rug, glass of cider. Oh, idyllic, know. idyllic. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the bit that we we all came here from. For. Yeah, absolutely right. And it's going to be great when Bob the dog is wandering about on your picnic blanket. Yeah. Well. Another addition to the family. It was lovely seeing <laughs> that news yesterday, Jason. Best cider type is the type you've got there. Clear. Fizzy, crisp and clean, hits the back of the throat very nicely. Michael used to make 80 litres a year of that same sort of cider. The juice yeah. is worth the squeeze. There you go. That's That sounds like a Portuguese saying. Um, when you when you drink it, it makes it all worthwhile, like this lovely summer, um, or well, this lovely spring, and, and all the work that's gone into making the garden grow that uh, you and Matty have been doing, and Lee, of course. Back in California, herds of goats were frequently used to control wild grass. It was a great exchange Grass control for one and a ready food supply for the other. But, I mean, they're even more troublesome than sheep, aren't they, goats? Um, I mean, it's, it's all a matter of being having the right infrastructure. Right. And so I, I probably would have sheep again. But rather than use electric fencing, which doesn't really have any effect on them because, obviously, their wool gets quite thick. Yeah. And so there's no skin contact to make them jump. <laughs> But the difference between buying electric fencing that I can move around and buying proper stock fencing, which yeah. will keep them in, um, one cost me about 500 euros. The other would have cost me about 2,000 euros oh, goodness. Right, okay. by, the, by the time that you've done all of the work. And so you're constantly trying to weigh up um, your inputs versus your outputs. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if I was going to keep sheep in perpetuity, and keep a flock forever then investing a couple of thousand euros in fencing would be worth it um but you know i think not for you no i mean I, I, the sheep cost me 50 euros each the lambs once they were just weaned cost me 50 euros and then even if you were to try and sell them commercially um by the time it's fully grown there's probably 150 euros of value of meat and products on on the sheep at the end. And so you're kind of tripling your money. Yeah. But for us, three sheep didn't warrant the money for the uh, fencing. No, fair enough. And nothing like, says Jackie, morning to you, Jackie, and nothing like the fluffy balls of loveliness you read about in fairy tales. They bang gates down to get your veg and they buy it as well. So not a great uh, review for the sheep there. Well, the, the thing that did it for me was they managed to get out of their area, came from the bottom part of the field up to the top. And I came home one day to find them working their way down my vineyard, eating all no. of the leaves off of my vineyard. Yikes. Um, and so I don't mind if I don't get anything back from something. But yeah. I don't want it to cost me in other areas as well. Yeah, yeah, that's heartbreaking, isn't it? Um, <laughs> also, we got some pictures in from Pete, um, who's um, a massive um, uh, harvest of radishes. Um, you may have one or two radishes yourself there. And um, the treatment that they've gone for, Pete and Diane, this is Diane with some of the radish harvest from their land, another beautiful blue sky here in central Portugal. And uh, they, uh, they've been washed and prepped. And I think preserved here. Yes, the, look at that. Some lovely radish 
um, pickles in the jar there. That's beautiful bit of work there at the bleach household. Uh, are you still making some nice ferments and jarred um, items there at Quinta Essential? Uh, yeah. Um, so what have we got at the moment? We have... We've only got a couple of products in at the moment because we're in that wonderful position because obviously fermentation takes a little while. Yeah. Um, and we'll make like 20, 20 odd kilos of say kimchi or a mm. uh, sauerkraut or something. And it's generally gone within four or five days. Yeah. And so at the moment we have this little beauty, which is a golden sauerkraut. Looks great. So that's like a traditional sauerkraut, but we've added some turmeric to it. Yeah. And so you're getting all of the fermented goodness for your probiotics. Plus, you're getting maximum benefit from your turmeric as uh, anti inflammatory and all of the good things that go with that. Like and you then, say, you're nourishing people, not just feeding them, you're nourishing them. That's a really good example, right there. Yeah. And this is a. This is what we call a naked kimchi. Right. Um, and so normally with a kimchi, you have two two other products, which is called gochujang and gochugaru, which is the fermented chili flakes. Mm. Um, this, <clears throat> this is more like a Korean pickle. And so it has all of the same elements as a kimchi, but without the heat because... Yeah. Um, Portuguese people aren't too fond of things which are piquant. Yes. And so we're always trying to find new ways to get good food into people. <laughs> and so um, if the upshot of that is that uh, we don't put any chili in that particular one, yeah. Um, but it gets it out to more people, then uh, we're, we're really happy to do that. As and presumably, mother... words getting round, more and more people coming to the shop, more Portuguese people coming, because that's important to you, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're getting a really good... Um, well, because the winter was so bad, um, people people didn't go out so much. And so, depending on the weather, it could be very hit and miss in the shop. Um, but we, we started doing a few markets... Oh, we're, in fact, we're going to be at Figaro dos Vinhos Market this Saturday. Good to know. And we're going to be in Espinal on Sunday for Glocal Market, two oh. wonderful little artisan markets. Uh, yeah. Great, great places, great place to socialise. Yes. Um, and come and have a look. But um, now the good weather's started. Um, we're getting more new customers each week. Um which and so when we when we first started, I'd, I'd have a box of each product, and some weeks we wouldn't sell out. Um, now we're kind of up to a couple of boxes of most things uh, a week, um, and this last week because it was so nice and sunny, by the end of Thursday, I could have really done with going back to the market and going and restocking because. Um, uh, all my tomatoes, all my carrots, all my onions, absolutely everything got sold in one day. Hey, but, fantastic. Um, and, and you know, so, something's going on, isn't it? Because the, 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 the prices in the supermarkets continue to go skyward. So I'm yeah. sure that's another aspect of why of your rising popularity. I'm sure you're not gouging and taking advantage in the way that some of the bigger people seem to be in the marketplace. I mean, you're representing some good value and some good produce, aren't you? And people must be switching on yeah. to that. Yeah, well, um, and so we tend to buy from a uh, small producer, you know, there'd be a large producer compared to us. Yeah. But in the grand scheme of agriculture, they're small producers. Um, I like to be able to talk to the people that I'm buying my produce from. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, our basic model is you have market price every week. Uh, I track that, It you know, it moves in the same way as, say, gold or oil yeah, yeah. or any yeah. of those other markets commodities right? um and what we do is we work our prices out every week and we put a uh, a markup flat markup on it every week yeah um our, our business clients they get a slightly better deal because obviously they're making 
uh, a an order every week. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, essentially, if we buy things, if we get things for a good price, we instantly pass that on to our customers. Um, and then as things go out of season, the price tends to rise a bit. Uh, if, if the price starts becoming untenable, then it's out of season and we we move to the next seasonal product because very, uh, good. very good Love um, and we feel like we're supporting portuguese agriculture yeah i'm sure um, you are absolutely right, and, right and you're part of it aren't you stuff. yeah yeah and you're part of it michael's gonna see you in figuera de Chivinhos on saturday Fantastic. so good so good to talk to you i've got to, i'm gonna i'm gonna um just finish with a with some uh, a God score tip of the day and a few uh, loose ends that need tying up. So, Jason, thank you very much indeed for being on. It's always wonderful catching up with you, seeing what Good you've been up to, just like it is with Matty and with Lee. So, I hope in this busy well, thank you for fitting us in in what is obviously a busy time, and we can do it again next month. Fantastic. Look forward. All to right, it. mate. Take care. Good luck with the uh, planning permission for your estufa. Is that what it's called? Your estufa. Yeah. Your estufa grande that you're going to be building over that way as well. <laughs> Sí, muy crunch, muy true value. Ciao, ciao, te abrazo, Mab. Obrigado, ciao. There he goes, Jason from Quinta Senso. Find them on Facebook and, of course, pop over there, buy some food, buy some proper food, get nourished with Jason, um, as Michael will be doing in Figuera dos Finos at the weekend. Nuno, sorry I didn't see you earlier on, but great to have had your company uh, this morning. Let's see if we've made sure to get all the comments on the screen. Bon dia, todos. Oh, that was uh, from from the coach, uh, Felice Terza, and he was uh, driving, um, or already in France driving. Weather looks a little better. We'll go out with your video that you sent us from France. Better today for the journey from Alençon to Angoulême. I've been to Angoulême, probably been to Alençon as well. So a video from there. Thank you. We'll be chronicling the journey in the Porsche, the Portugal trip, and we'll be meeting up with Coach Turner in due course as well. Look at this. He's busy out on the road. Still got time to send us a God's score tip of the day. I know I said I wasn't going to do these while traveling, but it occurred to me that it might be useful to talk about staying healthy while on the move. This can apply to trains, planes, and automobiles. Good movie. But it's worth getting out of your seat every 90 minutes or so and moving around. I'll suggest a few stretches in the next couple of days. Good on you, mate. Um, we were talking about taking um, animals to the vets when we cats and dogs this morning. I once saw a man dressed in a full plate armor. Morning to you, Carpe Diem. I wondered if he was doing a reenactment event. Nope, I'm taking the cat to the vets. Yes. A uh, big thing to understand about cats is they are creatures of habit and routine. Food at the same time in the morning, sit in the window, rearrange the hallway, rugs, etc. So true. Pam, I had to give a worming tablet, uh, a desparasitation interna to my cat. Tony later found a lovely pile of cat vomit. And she just loved that first thing in the morning. So I had to go to the vets and explain that. Did you do some gestures? <laughs> um, furball. No, not furball. It just coughed up the uh, worming tablet. Bon dia, everyone. Great visit with our son and a couple of his friends to Madrid over the last few days. They all enjoyed their short time in Portugal. Great to hear that. And look at this. Uh, Nuno was in. Jason's Quinta Essencia olive oil is really lovely, lovely tasting. So um, make sure you get to see them at the market or pop into the shop there. And um, thank you all for your wonderful comments. I think we got to them all. So forgive me if I didn't, but we'll be here again tomorrow, of course. And uh, our friend Sandra from Belgium will be popping in, uh, talking about a workshop she's running, as will Raquel and a language teacher who I'm, sp- I'm, I'm um, hopefully getting on to the show tomorrow spring really has sprung in portugal this morning i'd love one month of portugal heat in belfast if we could do that for you you know we would deagle so um all the best to you lots of love to you over there in belfast and um love to all the family there and have a great day everyone see you tomorrow yeah with raquel with sandra and perhaps that mystery as yet mystery uh, portuguese european portuguese language teacher we've got the picture ceiling of the day from Coach Turner, from Alençon, and a little video to play you out with as well. So see you tomorrow. Take care. Have a great day on a, a wonderful spring day in Portugal. You saw those blue skies from the gentleman on the screen this morning. It looks like I've got one now, and uh, I'm popping out. Yeah, going to go and have a wander underneath this beautiful blue sky in Portugal, and we'll leave you this video from France. <laughs>